Today we're going to be talking all about fishing for walleyes in the month of September. So the month is just starting up right now. I got a nice walleye here. I better grab the net. Got a little bit of a mess here because I just got just got out on the water here and boom just popped one right away. Ooh, and this is a pretty good walleye here. Pretty solid fish. September is one of my favorite months for sure. What's cool about September is, oh yeah, there we go. What's cool about September is, September is really like a transition period, a true, true transition period for walleyes. And there we go. That's a good one right there. That's a mid twenties fish. So you can see I got the crawler on there. We'll talk a little bit about presentation later in this video. Um, but we're gonna get into September tips. Uh, I'm gonna unhook this fish and then we're gonna share the first tip of the day. All right, so let's get that guy out right there. Nice fish, get her back. All right, so the first tip, we'll make this one quick. Uh, when people think of September, for sure they're accurate in thinking that this is the transition from summer to fall. Now I will say, you know, there are some tactics that work way better in fall, but for me, I like to hold on to some of my summer tactics. So tip number one is gonna be hold tight to some of the things that you've been having success with during the summer, um, including crawlers. So a lot of people when the water temperatures start to drop off, they start to think, man, ditch the crawlers, even ditch the leeches. Some people know not to ditch the leeches, but um, keep those crawlers in the boat. It's not time to fully transition over to minnows. Um, I will share this in future videos if we do one of these for the month of October. Once again, do not, ditch the crawlers in October, but never ditch the crawlers. This is a time with water temperatures dropping, you know, the fish will get a little fired up and you can switch to, you, know, you can get more bites on plastics and other reaction presentations, uh, but finesse still works this time of year. So keep that in your bag of tricks. That's tip number one. All right, so tip number two, we're gonna talk a little bit about location. So. One thing that's really common this time of year you'll find is when you're talking the transition into fall, you're gonna hear a lot of people talk about uh, the importance of fishing out deep. So it is true, the bait fish are pushing out into deeper water. Um, you will find more walleyes out on this deeper structure. Um, that really does come into play this time of year. But with that being said, absolutely do not be afraid to fish shallow. You know, late fall, you'll see a big push of bait fish and walleyes up into very shallow spots, stuff that, you know, many people would consider to be springtime fishing spots. Um, but with that being said, um, some of the very, very best spots in the month of September are still in the weeds. So you're gonna find more fish pushing off onto deep water humps, you know, basically, you know, just kind of a step deeper um, than you would find them in the summer. Um, but I'll show you really quick the spot that we caught this walleye on right here. Uh, if you take a look at the scope here, so this really does dump off, but there's kind of scattered weeds throughout here. These aren't very tall weeds. Um, but I just basically found um, a walleye essentially right, well, pretty much right where this guy is, right, right there. Do you see that little mark right on the edge there? Um, that's essentially what this last walleye looked like. I didn't have my camera set up because I just dropped the boat in the water here and I was getting everything prepared. And I said, ooh, there's a walleye. And then I hooked up with it and then pressed the record button. Uh, but weed line fish, fish up in the weeds, fish that are relating to the weeds are still a really awesome golden ticket uh, if you wanna go and catch walleyes this time of year in the month of September. Um, and that 
does remain true throughout the month of fall. Um, but September is an awesome month where you have like an awesome uh, confluence of water temperatures that are starting to drop um, and then also weed growth that's basically at, at its fullest because it's had all summer uh, to grow and get thick and get plentiful and get tall. Um, so this is a great month for fishing the weeds because of those two things you have great weed growth and you have falling water temperatures that are getting the fish more active. So just something to think about that's tip number two but we're going to move on to tip number three. All right, that's a good walleye right there, Zelda. We gotta get that one. Where'd she go? There she is. Right? Oh yeah. Screaming up at it. He's got it. There we go. That's a heavy fish. That is a heavy fish right there. <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know why I'm using my southern accent. Because we're walleye fishing. Oh. All right. Ooh, this is a really big one, guys. All right, so I got a big fish here. And, uh, oh, man, if it's a walleye, it's big, man. If it is a walleye, it's a big one. Oh, yeah, it's a really big walleye. Really big walleye. Oh, oh my gosh, guys. This is a big one right here. Holy cow, holy cow. Check out that walleye right there. That is a giant. That is upper 20s right there. Look at that thing. Oh my gosh. Look how yellow it is too. It's like, it's almost, a, it's almost like a golden walleye. Is this a giant golden walleye? What a beautiful fish, amazing. Look at that thing. And funny enough, look what it ate. <laughs> a gold stand-up tungsten jig for a beautiful, big, giant golden walleye. Amazing fish. One of the coolest, prettiest golden walleyes I've ever seen. 28 and a half inches. Is she gonna go? Oh yeah. <laughs> there she goes, that was a beauty. All right, so the next tip that I got for you associated to that last fish actually, um, is this tip number three? Well, let's go with three. Tip number three uh, is gonna be, don't be afraid to change very quickly this time of year. So the thing about September, as we've already talked about, things are changing fast during this month. You know, the early parts of September are gonna act a lot in some years, a lot like high summer, um, just kind of peak summer conditions. August is really peak summer. Um, September's not too far off. So you're gonna go from basically peak temperature during this month, um, climbing down uh, into basically fall temperature by the time you get to late September. And the thing is, is things can change very, very quickly. I was in the boat uh, with my buddy, Tom Wynn, uh, a couple years ago and we saw things change so quickly over the course of a day where it was like we were creaming fish on summer tactics we were using night crawlers and leeches and stuff like that and it was almost like it was almost like a, a light switch uh, went off and all of a sudden couldn't get any bites um, on leeches or night crawlers or anything like that, and it was only a minnow bite. Yeah, we're using leeches today. Well, we're using a combination of leeches and crawlers, really, because, you know, up here in Minnesota, a lot of you guys like to use live bait. And, uh, but I just wanted to show you, like, the common knowledge is we're using minnows this time of year. We're supposed to, but they're just not hitting them. The bait just started moving in. We're seeing these balls come in here, and um, they're, yeah, we switched to minnows, and two minnows in a row now, and they're, 
really getting them. I think today, like with the frost this morning, we got to watch late summer transition to fall, like yep. go officially. Like yeah, we as we were here, <laughs> the bait showed up, like the yep. fish changed, like the uh, everything changed, um, you know, in like a six, seven hour time period. Yep. So don't be afraid to change quickly. Uh, the first fish I caught was right up on the weed line um, and I was looking around. I've been looking around, searching around for more walleyes um, and I wasn't finding that many, you know, different parts of the lake, they may be loaded up in the weed line, but in this little section, I only found a few. I found that one nice fish that we caught right off the get-go, um, but I wasn't finding a lot more. Um, so what I did uh, was I adjusted quickly. So I scooted out onto some offshore structure. Those are kind of the two key main things I like to fish in September are weed line stuff and then offshore structure. Um, so I pushed off into some, some offshore structure and I saw that there was a bunch, a bunch, a bunch um, of bait fish all over. So that is a really good sign uh, looking for bait fish this time of year, especially when you're fishing deep. Um, and uh, I was like, ooh, this is probably gonna be a good area just based on how much bait fish I'm seeing. Um, so looked around, saw a few marks and caught that one absolutely gorgeous fish and uh the one thing i noticed about that fish right away is it looked like an absolute blimp on the live scope so don't be afraid to make adjustments um whether that's a massive adjustment like a summer to fall transition adjustment or it's a micro adjustment um going from you know one type of structure cover element area um, and just kind of moseying out to something that's completely different so read the water read the bait fish activity pay attention to where you're seeing more fish less fish you know how are those fish positioned you know are they willing to bite um, pay attention to all the different environmental factors um, and fish accordingly because that's how you're going to catch more walleyes so that's tip number three all right tip Number four for September walleye fishing is not necessarily a tip that's uh, about fishing per se, but when you're out on the water this time of year, um, just from a clothing standpoint, be prepared for anything. So right now I have a sweatshirt on. This is a lighter sweatshirt. I have a, a heavier sweatshirt packed up. Um, I also have sun shirts, you know, ready for, if air temperatures climb up into, you know, the mid to high 70s and the sun pokes out, uh, it's gonna feel a lot different out here. Uh, and that being said, you know, I may fish a few more hours into the evening here and it might start to get really cold and, you know, I may want more than this. Or, you know what, it may rain. Uh, September, you usually don't see much snow, but, <laughs> so I will always have a sun shirt, sweatshirt, rain suit, ready kind of any of the above because you just don't know what the conditions are going to be like and this time of year uh, you have so much variability in the conditions it can be very very chilly in the morning um, and then by the time you get to the middle of the day um, you may want to jump in the lake because you're so hot so just keep that in mind when you're coming out because there's nothing worse than coming out here and just being you know ill prepared you know just cold the whole time or especially if you're bringing kids kids with or your wife or something like that uh, or if you're a fishing gal and you're bringing your husband uh, just make sure uh, everybody has kind of appropriate clothing for a wide variety of conditions all right for the fifth and final tip for september walleye fishing i'm actually going to run through all of the uh, rods that I have tied up this time of year. Instead of running around the boat and picking them all up, I'm gonna kind of list a few of them. I have a couple of them right here. So of course a jig, I'll always have a jig ready. Uh, eighth ounce, quarter ounce, something that I can put live bait on. Um, I like to use longer shank or yeah, more of a long shank uh, or kind of regular shank jig, just purely for the fact that I do have the ability to either throw up a night crawler on there, I can put a red tail on there, I can throw a leech on there. Um, I've been starting to use and experiment more with these stand-up jigs. Uh, so this is Northland's tungsten stand-up jig. Um, and the thing I like about that is when I do have live bait on it, I can let it go down to the bottom and that just kind of promotes that live bait standing up a little bit better. Um, so I've been playing with these and I've been liking them, but I like the fact with these longer shank jigs, you can, I like using short shanks for minnows if I know I'm gonna be using minnows, um, but 
minnows can work just fine on a long shank. So um, that uh, another one right here is the puppet minnow. So glide baits like this. This is the month where you see the effectiveness of glide baits uh, turn up. So uh, this is kind of the transition period when glide baits start to get better and better. Um, another one that I always have tied up, uh, basically every single month of the year is a drop shot because you can fish it so efficiently. Uh, you can put a leech on there, a crawler, you can put a minnow on there. Uh, sometimes if you want to get uh, some nice unders, one thing that you can do is you can just put a little leech on there um, and toss it out there. Uh, but that being said, um, Northland's new eye candy, the rig and leech and the jig and leech, uh, are both really good on drop shots as well. So uh, that's something I will use as well when I don't want to deal with live bait. Um, but drop shots are really effective because you can fish them in the weeds, you can fish them out deep, you can fish them wherever you want, and they just seem to get bit really, really well for whatever reason. Um, a couple other presentations that I have tied up um, is a bobber rod. Now bobbers are just great all year, all, all year round, kind of for the same reason drop shots are. Um, you can just hold baits kind of stationary in place and just get bites. Um, so bobbers are always going to be an effective strategy. Um, beyond that, like a jig and a plastic, very, very good this time of year, especially as water temperatures start to cool um, and you get on a consistent cooling trend, uh, you can just start whipping plastics around, popping it and getting an aggressive walleye strike. So I love plastics in September and they just get better and better as we get deeper into September. So that's something that I always have on. I've talked about it before. It's nice to have a plastic ready to just whip out there kind of in any condition, um, just because, you know, you can just, ha uh, you can cast it really, really hard, you know, out a hundred feet if you have to. Uh, but if you have a walleye that maybe you know, ripped off your minnow or something like that, casting a plastic in there, a lot of times you can get them. Um, and then beyond that, uh, some tactics that I don't personally use a lot in the summer, but I start to bust out and start to rig up um, in the month of September are some of your classic live bait rigging setups. So your Lindy rigs, whatever you want to call them. Um, and I will usually have a couple of those tied up this time of year, just because I want to have a few different looks. Uh, I may have two or three rigs tied up uh, as we get into fall, just different ways to present live bait. Um, and so I'll run through more of those in the future, but uh, you know, we're talking about tungsten bullet weights, egg sinkers, stuff like that, you know, leaders that are anywhere from, you know, three feet to six feet to 12 feet, uh, just different presentations. Sometimes, you know, you can even use a split shot rig where you pinch a few split shots on the line uh, and have something that can kind of, you know, float as it presents, you know, in front of a fish. So, uh, there's a lot to play with when it comes to rigs and September is the month um, where things start to kind of transition and rigs can become a really big mainstay. So um, anywho, uh, those are my top five September walleye tips. Hopefully you picked up a few, a few good tidbits in this one. Um, and uh, yeah, with that being said, thank you for watching all the way to the end. I appreciate you guys and gals and uh, I'll see you in the next one.